Brenton. What are you doing in detention? Oh, well, you know, this thing happened. You see, I was actually, I was out at lunchtime and uh, Mrs. Greenberg, she saw that I had my socks down around my ankles and, and, well, you know how it goes. Now I'm here. Oh, really? Whoa. Okay. Man. Well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully we're not in here for too long. Yeah, I really hope so. Well, well, how did you get in here? Oh, well, it's a little bit embarrassing. You see, I snuck into the headmaster's office and on the PA system, I blasted 80s music. Oh, David Bowie? Yes, Brenton. I blasted David Bowie. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was like that was the most like tense pause you and I've ever experienced in our lives. Like <laughs> it was it was it was a, it was a it was a dramatic pause that I don't know if it was necessarily called for, so but you know. But, you know, it's the way it is. That's just um, how we roll sometimes. Yeah. Speaking of actually I have no segue for this. Look, we're we're doing we're doing <laughs> I want I wanna open up this episode, Brenton, by talking about a topic I find quite amusing because we're focusing on teenagers this week. And I yes. wanted to ask you, do you remember your introduction to alcohol? Yeah, I do, I do, I do. Do you? I do. actually yes, I do. Depends on what occasion you asked. Because like I have like because when you say to people you're at like parties and that kind of stuff, like, oh, do you remember your first drink? People will be like, Well, I remember the first time I got drunk, or they'll be like when you first had your first sip. Like how do you remember how old you were when you had your first sip? Uh yes I do. What were I you? Do. Three? <sighs> A little older. Um <laughs> <no>. <laughs> No, my no, my the first experience like with anything was that my my pop was like let me like have this like like a quarter of a teaspoon of like the foam off the top of his beer. Did he actually get a spoon and just feed that to you? Yeah, really? yeah. Because I was like, I want. Yeah, he was like, I, I was like, I want something. He was like, here you go, son. And I was probably like six or seven. Oh, no, like, you weren't really that I, young. I was. Oh I my was. Goodness. Yeah, and he was. It was like the bubbles off the thing, so it wasn't like I couldn't even. I don't even think I could taste anything. It's just, it's it so just you like, make it sound so friendly when you're like, it's just bubbles. It's like a little kid like blowing bubbles with a little thing, but yours is beer froth. Yeah, like I, I, I remember that. That was my first like experience. Did you like um, it? And I was like, that's no. <laughs> <It's> fucking, <laughs> These aren't the bubbles disgusting. I'm used to. Was this like with the family members? Like, like, did he sneak it into your mouth, or did you like? No, no. It was just I was just at the dinner table, and yep, that was that. Oh. And I was, and then I went, I went, oh, and everyone kind of laughed at me. And, and like, ha, 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 was... underage drinking. <laughs> 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 That's so funny. Ex- what what exactly. about, uh, like, mine was kind of similar for my first sip. I remember, um, I can't remember who it was. Like, it might have been mom or dad or someone like that. And I remember just, like, one day saying, can I have a beer? And they just said, you can have one sip. And I'm like, okay. And I remember sipping it. I remember thinking, this is repulsive. I will never drink beer in my life. And I remember saying those words. And they all laughed and like, sure, you won't, Nathan. They all gave a little wink to the camera. And I'm like, I won't. And yet, here we are, Brenton. What about the first time you got drunk? Like, you and probably... Yet- <laughs> um, so, funny story Oh, is that... I don't think I've ever been... I don't think I've ever actually been drunk in my life. So, I'm coming at you from a, a full whoa. other perspective of this. Whoa, 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 buddy. I'm just trying to think back on all the times we've been out together. I haven't seen you drunk. I've seen you... I haven't, I haven't even seen you drink, like, that copious name. I'm trying to think of, like, the birthday parties we've been to as well. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine you drunk. I think I've seen you act drunk. We must have been done some point of theatre where you pretended to be drunk. <laughs> But like, is it because you haven't drunk the required amount of alcohol, or like because you just you just don't feel the symptoms, or is it like is it you being like at a party being like I'm not um, drunk, and everyone's like no, Brenton, you do get drunk. <laughs> no, no, no. It's 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 um no. I I've never I can say confidently I've never been drunk. Like I've probably been I've probably oh, oh. I can't imagine how miserable your life must be. Oh yeah, it, it does. <laughs> it basically sucks. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> what a, what a horrible existence. Brenton lives, and now now you all know. But how no, come? It's, it's it more like... of a choice thing for me. Oh, okay. I don't... Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I realize this might be a deeply personal thing to bring up. <laughs> it's like, but no, as in like you. you will you... it? Will it? Funnily, fu- f- funnily enough, it is. But um, oh, okay. so I will throw the question back at you <laughs> like the and say, of that. do you remember your? Do you remember your uh, first experience of being drunk? Oh boy, do I! Yeah, it was. I was like. I think I was being like 15 or something like that. It was at a friend's birthday party. It was that, uh, you know them. It was Lucas's, our mutual friend Lucas's. It was his sister's 18th. 
and I would have been 15. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, that was the wow. event. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and um, I, I remember going to it not thinking I would drink. I never. I, I think outside that, I'd only ever had a sip of mm. alcohol before, maybe a couple of times. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I thought Lucas, Trent, and I, who were at the party, my other friends, we were just going to, like, you know, just chat to people and hang out, maybe dance, a little bit like that. But then I remember, like, we were the only 15-year-olds then. The rest were, like, 17, 18. And um, oh, this would have been like year nine or year ten or something like that. I remember just everyone being so excited. Us youngins were there, and they just wanted us all to mm. get cooked. And um, <laughs> Trent and Lucas very um, appropriately were not into that. They're like, no, no, no we're not going to drink. But I was just like, mm, maybe. And the first ever thing I drank there was this like weird blue cocktail. It would have been like vodka and blue liqueur and something else in it. I remember it being very, very strong. I remember thinking, this is the fun liquid. I will have thirty. And so I just kept on drinking it and um, they had this face paint and they uh, covered me in it and I w- pretended to be like a Navi kind of avatar person and I was just running about just being like an, um, an idiotic 15 year old. And that morning, the next morning I had my first hangover and I was like, I would never touch alcohol again. And then uh, as the story goes, you didn't and uh, to, to this day, <laughs> this is you've never, this is where the narrator, never, yeah. <laughs> this is where the narrator goes, but he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, you know, you know, there's like, you know those, like, choose-your-own-adventure storybooks? And, like, <laughs> yes. this is, like, there's the choice that happens, but, like, both choices inevitably lead to, lead to the same outcome. That That's, like, that's that was you that's with, that, so with true. that choice. That's yeah. very, very true. Yeah, that was... Yeah, I remember just being, like... I remember, like, reeking of alcohol when I was in the car back home. I think mum must have picked me up or something like that. Oof. And she was just like, how Oof. was your night? And I'm like... And she could so tell I was hungover, but I was just, like, hiding it like nothing else, thinking I was being so sneaky. I was like, oh, it's pretty good, you know? Like, we played Monopoly, so, like, it was pretty rad. And she's like, oh, cool. And I'm like, I was so... I remember I never touched blue liqueur for years after that, simply because of that night. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Classic hey, That Another show, episode. That, that show where we uh, review movies that are 20 years or older, mm-hmm. which makes them classic. That's what makes them classic, guys. That's how it works. And uh, we throw in some Aussie banter in there for good measure. So I'm mm-hmm. your host, Brenton, and this is your other host... Like angsty Nathan, like a moody, teeny angsty Nathan. And uh, so what's fun is today we're actually going to be reviewing... That uh, that that eighties classic, I guess, from eighty five specifically, the Breakfast Club. I uh, know we're continuing oh. our double bill. It's very exciting, Brenton. I just I just love talking about movies with the word breakfast in their title. Are there any others we oh. could have done? I'm trying to think. We did Breakfast at Tiffany's and Breakfast Clubs. I think they're the main breakfast films. I'm trying to we think. We could do. Like, I'm trying to think. There might be a film called. I, I bet there's a film called A Dog's Breakfast. I reckon that's somewhere out there. <laughs> or a film that's just called Breakfast, like it's probably starring like Nicholas Cage and he's holding up like a plate of pasta and he's saying breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, classic. That would totally be a Nicholas Cage film. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I feel like also for the prologue, maybe we should have done breakfast. But then I think about it more, and I'm like, breakfast would have been a very boring conversation starter. <laughs> so this maybe is not. True. This yeah. is true. So uh, yeah, so. so yeah. Should we should we dive right into it, dude? You, shall I step into your eighties office and pitch you this movie? Well, I was going to say, Nathan, would you mind coming in here, taking a mm-hmm. seat? Can mm-hmm. I get you a coffee? Can I get you a drink of water? Okay. Can I get you anything? Can you please get me a cup of coffee and just throw it in my face so I can be energized, John Hughes? Sure, I can. I can organize that. Uh, all right, just let me brew this up. All right, Nathan, here you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah! ah, it burns. Woo! All right, I'm John Hughes. I'm energetic because it's the 80s, and uh, I want to make this film called The Breakfast Club. Okay, so imagine a world where it's mid-80s. We're at a high school, just your plain old high school, and it's detention. It's a Saturday. Brenton, what are we doing at a high school on a Saturday? Shut up and I'll tell you. All right, it's detention, and we've got five different teenagers locked in this school library. We have all the classics, the jock, the popular girl, the nerd, the goth girl, and the bully, and they're all bundled together uh in this room and they're a little bit bored because they're in detention so we're going to watch them try and for an hour and a half make detention fun if not uh emotionally revealing as they get up to a whole bunch of stuff and brenton imagine this as 80s as possible so 80s hair 80s music 80s slang um you know 80s bigotry Everything you remember about the '80s, Brenton, it's it's in this film. I'm John Hughes, and uh, that's that's what I'm gonna make for today. 
Ah, okay. Well, it doesn't sound, uh, you know, that it's an interesting pitch. So, yeah. you know, I'll give you a budget. I'll give you a budget. We can make that Look, work. Look, Brenton, um, everyone loves detention. So, why not make a film about detention? Because it's such a fun and interesting thing to make a movie about. Sure, sure. Okay, well, like I said, here's a budget. We can we can make that half happen. Just go off and... Uh, I mean, like, who are you going to cast? What what ages are you going to cast as these main oh, characters? Oh, fucked if I know of any of these actors. But you know what? I think we're going to cast maybe 30-year-olds as these teenagers because <laughs> that's another staple of the 80s, you know? Getting dramatically older actors to play bloody teenagers and see if it passes. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let's, let, but it's what the you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh? Oh, of all the fucking films that we've had to review, this is probably like the one with the most egregious age difference for what the character should really be. Like, you know you know when we did, like, Animal House back in our second episode and we're like, these people should oh, not be in university. That was pretty bad, yeah. That yeah. was pretty horrendous. I don't think this is as bad as that as far no, as the age not. gap. But, like, it still ain't good, Brenton. It's no Spider-Man home... It's still, it ain't no Spider-Man homecoming, you know? No, <laughs> no. I know exactly what you mean. But, uh, Brenton, I, I, I see your Band-Aids dangling off your knees, so... Yes, it yeah. is, it is. So I'm just gonna... Oh! Like Ooh! that! Rip that off, and uh, I'm just gonna throw that over there into the pile. Whoop! And, uh, yeah, let's get into this. So you haven't seen this film... Ever. You've never seen the No, never. I've never had the yeah, I've never had to see this thing before, Brenton, until today, until this episode where I sat through now, it. Now the f- the fact that you just uh refer to it as this thing gets me g- gives me an interesting insight into what what your review <laughs> is gonna be. So before we get into that, I'll say that I have seen this film once before and it was a few years ago mm-hmm. and uh I remember enjoying it. Uh watching it again now. It's so it. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, oh wow. I'm wow. Not you really f- don't like this movie, do you? Oh, it was such a slug to sit through. Oh my god. Like this 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 movie, like it's supposed to be iconic. Everyone talks about the fucking Breakfast Club. When I was a kid, I heard about the Breakfast Club. I'm like, you should watch the Breakfast Club. I'm like, oh maybe. And here I am, twenty three, finally sitting down to watch this fucking thing, and like, and I'm watching it. It is the slowest movie I have ever seen in my life. Like, and I th- and I thought like Godfather was slow, but Brenton, this shit. Oh my god. Ah, I've seen like. Ah, oh, you know there's that, like, snail movie called Turbo, but the fucking snail, snail that can go really fast. Remember that movie from years back? I, I mean, I never saw it, but yes, I know. I remember the marketing that campaign. Blo- yep. That bloody character and premise is quicker than this movie. I would rather watch a fucking superpower snail than see this shit again. Oh, my God. But I just don't, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want to start off on negativity, Brenton. Tell me th- some things you liked about this movie. I do like this movie. I really like this movie. Um, okay. I've... I still like this movie, Nathan. Was what I was why say as, I, as I kept why that, um, why are I you like, on board this train? I like the characters. I like their interactions in this. Movie. You like the characters? Think, They're yeah, the worst bloody part about it. <laughs> what <laughs> no, are you I talking do. about? Where did you come from? What have you smoked before this movie? <laughs> No, no, I really like these characters. I can appreciate that there's some moments in it that are a little over the top, let's say, or melodramatic. But hey, like it's the '80s, and and I've always kind of liked this movie. I think I think um, there's there are they are relatable characters, and you can see mm. why this film kind of stood the test of time and became a classic. Like, um, <sighs> I, watching it in retrospect, there are there are things that some of the characters do that you know. It's very clear that it's been made in another time. I don't know if this movie would be made in the way it was made today, mm. re- specifically referencing uh, how it treats the women in this film in some yeah. instances. Yeah. Um, but overall, does that affect my enjoyment of this film? No. Brenton, no, but it's something worth noting. Okay, my gripe with the movie isn't the '80s stuff. Like, I'm like, no, it's like it's like the '80s. It's like the product of the '80s. I'm cool with that. I don't care about the costumes. I don't care about the music. Like, I thought the music actually was quite good. I was really the into the great. music. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. I think most of it was. There were a couple songs I was. I will talk about in spoilers. I didn't approve of, but um, I thought the opening song and the guitar, the way the film opens with the cool rock music. I'm like, I remember like when the film started. I was so on board. I'm like, yep, this is it. This is the movie I want to see. But then we get to know the characters, and Brenton just point blank, point blank. I don't like any of them. 
<laughs> like any really? of them. Really? Really. Wow. I know. Any uh, of them? No. I don't like any of them. All right. So, like, one... Yeah, there's the whole thing that the kids don't look high school age at all. Like, a few of them do. I thought the nerd did. Maybe um, the goth did. The the, the, the the popular girl doesn't. The bully certainly doesn't look as though he's bloody 40. And the jock... I guess he... I know, he, the jock definitely looks like in his 20s as well. Oh, the the, the jock looks the oldest, I think. Oh. Uh, actually, no, the bully No, the, the boy. Bully does. The bully's like... Yeah, the but bully I think does. that might be intentional because it looks as though he has been held back. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, I can buy that out of all of them. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I do understand that, but like, I don't know. I was just like, all of them. Like, they just... They're all dickheads. Like, they're all so mean to each <laughs> other. And like, they're all, they're all just consistently ins- I know like bullies in the 80s were harsher than probably you get today. Like they, they were, I think they were less censored. I don't know. I wasn't in the 80s. But like, they were just like, they just consistently held insults. They're all just like hating each other from the get go. Like the nerd tries to be nice to them, but they're all just like, fuck off. And then he's just like, fine, I will. And then like, they're all just so mean, Brenton. Like, they, I don't like, know. Uh, but uh, isn't that, isn't that the point like that they are they're all from different worlds and so they don't get along and they are genuinely Maybe, assholes but, to each but other but there's no here's the thing I guess here's a problem with this movie there's no main character to it like they're all kind of the main characters kind of like that ensemble piece so I don't know who as an audience member I'm supposed to be latching on to because I, all right. of them I just don't know who I'm supposed to root for I certainly don't root for the bully because he's just <laughs> so right. but he gets the most screen time despite that so naturally that makes you think he might be the protagonist but even like the jock like he tries to like mediate the situation but he ends up just being like some asshole that's trying to like be too modest like the popular girl is like stuck up even though she's i don't know i'll get into her later on the nerd he's too quiet and the goth chick she doesn't say a fucking word until like maybe a third into the movie so i'm like I none of them right and the teacher but- the teacher <laughs> i was just like he out of all of them he's the worst i'm just like all of you just like burned in the building already it's like Oh, I like to think that this film might be a Black Mirror episode where it just it's revealed that they're all in purgatory <laughs> and they're all about to go to hell. And this is like what purgatory is. It's a fucking high school detention. Nathan, that was possibly your greatest rant you've ever <laughs> given on this show. <laughs> Look, it uh, only t- it took us it took us uh, it took us forty three episodes to get there, but <laughs> in, in the end, you you gave a significant rant. I'm just um, I'm so bored with this film. Were you not bored during this thing? I understand. I think the start. It's it's a slow start. I would agree with that. It's a slow uh, build. slow start. But slow start, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> like a kid being shot in the foot in a marathon is a slow start. This film crawls. <laughs> like like this is oh, oh. I've seen I've seen lepers run faster than this shit. Like this is just neck level slow. I I I feel like I need to for all of our listeners out there that love the Breakfast Club, I need to defend this. Um You really do. I, you really I do. Think, you know what? Okay. I think, there are positives. There are positives in this film. <laughs> I understand that this film is at a slower pace, but I feel like some of the negatives you've pointed out in terms of the plot, such as uh, the characters not being likable, the characters being assholes to each other, no one really treating each other with respect and doing horrible things to each other, is kind of the point. And <laughs> as, as much as you don't want to admit it, like kids are fucking assholes. Like, you oh, know, they like, are. Like, they it, are. It does. It does represent. There is a truth to what it's representing. Mm. I understand your criticisms of the casting of people that are way too old for this. And like, yeah, maybe the bully slash criminal character. Um, you you can be it can be forgiven given like you just said that he's like being kept behind. Mm. Um, I understand that, but again, this is being cast in a different time. But I really feel like the, with the journey that all these characters go on, because it's such an ensemble piece, and, oh and I think God. I think that deserves, um, you know, I feel like that des- that deserves credit that the screenplay kind of holds up and gives each character. Okay, no, it doesn't. Because you know what I really dislike about it? Because you mentioned this about their bloody character arcs. It's because this whole film is them like slowly learning to kind of like each other, and like they're kind of getting up to some mischief. And then the last third of this movie is them all just sitting around in a fucking room, each of them doing a five minute monologue that is just so poorly delivered and, the, and they go uh, I mean minor spoiler alert but no one gives a shit like and they just all monologue about everything that's wrong with them and they one kid does a monologue and the next kid does a monologue I'm like shut the fuck up like oh there's so many more interesting ways to reveal this like what this movie should have been is that it should have been a play I reckon this would have well, worked I was, I was way better say, as it's, a play it's very, it's very much a play um, yeah it's a film and like but at the same time like I just think the 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 messages and the characters and the what is happening is strong enough to to overcome um, what message any... what is the message but look i i don't know i'm just think it's a representation 
of of adolescents and individuals that are like to the extremes like this these aren't people that are like whinging about their lives necessarily like if everything's awful like you mm. have like these are people are to the extremes like emotionally as well is my point mm. not just as a stereotype so it, that creates conflict um and drama and obviously things that we as adults even as adults mm-hmm. obviously teenagers can relate to and um uh, kind of learn from i guess like it's 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 fun i, I just think this movie's such a, a blast to watch like as silly as that sounds given that it is quite a mm-hmm. slow pace but again like it's a film that's been made in the 80s and it's not the last temptation of christ oh it's my not God. the godfather stop it saying is- it was made in the 80s because the point of this podcast is saying okay in 2019 does this shit then hold i will up? say this that i still think that this holds up all right i'm going to talk about what i liked about the movie I liked okay. I liked the library. I thought that's probably the nicest library I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like for their school library, that shit is well funded. Like that is a damn nice library. I was a big fan of that. Although, despite that, I think all the budget went into the library because their lockers are like so small. I think that's the smallest school locker I've ever seen in my life. Did you think this when you saw that? Well, I yes, I I I, I think like um. I don't know. It's like they actually filmed in like an actual library, and then the rest of the, like they actually had to make the set for like the rest of it. They probably and so did. like, like that's that's to me what that looks like. So it's like a real. It's probably a community library or something. It's not even a school yeah. library. It probably is um, because that's a huge set. It's like, so big. It's a huge set. Yeah, um, it doesn't even need to be that big because they barely move out of their desk. So it doesn't. It's not like they need the space. But like, no, no. yeah. All right, one thing I also liked, Brenton, is that. I, one thing I will give the script is that I like that we don't know immediately what they did, and a lot of the tension from the films comes from working out what they did to suddenly get detention. I do like that. I will give the film that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, some of the reasoning behind some of the things is pretty. Whew, it's uh. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, you you work out. Oh, these kids aren't what I thought. I thought the teacher was wasted. I wish Ben Mendelsohn played him because he looked a little bit like Ben Mendelsohn. He looks so much. It's funny now you say that because I was thinking the whole time, who does this guy rem- like? Who does this guy look like? And I was mm. like, because it's so familiar, and it's Ben Mendelsohn. Exactly, it's Ben Mendelsohn, and he would have been so much better. Obviously, Ben Mendelsohn wasn't Ben Mendelsohn in 1985, but like, oh, he would have done such a better job with this. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I mean that that character is probably is is the weakest character in the film. Oh yeah, like, it's, uh, yeah. Um, which we can get into a bit more in spoilers. There's a couple of things I want to say about him. Uh, and speaking of uh, lookalikes, don't you think that um, don't you think that the Jock character looks like a young Martin Sheen? Oh, he does. Yeah. yeah dude. Oh, How I didn't even think it? about that. No, that's so true. Are we sure that's not young Martin Sheen? I'm not sure. But, oh. uh, if it is, if it is, the how ironic for this podcast, and you're all probably laughing. At <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. I love the producers. But, like, I don't know. I was thinking, like, I don't know. Uh, here's the thing. I was thinking when I was watching this, like, this, this movie allegedly launched the careers of all these young actors. And this could be down to naivety, but I haven't seen, like, much of the work no, that these young no. actors have been in. You know what I mean? It's not like you're yeah, seeing no. like you know like young you know Toby Maguire or or young Leo DiCaprio <laughs> or something like that. You know, I love that you mentioned Toby Maguire. <laughs> like, like, I think of a young teenager and I think of like fucking thirty year old Toby Maguire pretending to be Peter Parker. So I'm like, <laughs> he could have been in there for all we know. But I'm just trying to think. Like, I find no fascination watching these young actors. I really don't. I feel like I feel like the the bully part was was written for John Belushi, and I feel like he would have done a better part for it as well. Oh, it was not written. There's, there's no way that was written for John Belushi. Like, no. Like, God. Like, he would have no. been way too old for it. But I've, I'm getting those kind of vibes from him. But don't you like? Don't you feel like that the, there is depth to these characters? Like, no. <laughs> even though. <laughs> Wow! Like I just, I don't like, know. Some it just them... feels so artificial. Like and they're, and they're also predictable as well. It's like oh, the boys like oh, I got this when I was growing up. Like no shit. Like that's what I hate. They're acting like every time when they reveal these big revelations, it's such like a plot twist. I'm like oh, really? The jock was treated no. like this. You would have guessed. Like they're but, all archetypes. They're all but it's point sure. blank like, archetypes. It doesn't need to be necessarily treated as a and like yes, they are archetypes. And yes, but don't you think the performances like and the execution outweighs like that? No. <laughs> I don't. I wish I could. Like, wow, I really disagree with you. Then. Like, yeah. I, there were moments where I did feel something for them. Like, I I liked it when the goth girl had a big moment. Like, 
I don't know. I feel like all this uh, is in spoilers. Do, can we just... Can we go... Can, yeah, let's get to spoilers. Let's just dive Let's, let's rate this movie. Dude, yeah. I'm giving this a thumbs up. Like, I really disagree with you on this one. It's probably the biggest disagreement I've had since Silence of wow. the Lambs, to be honest. Oh, yeah. there we go. This yeah. is the biggest rift we had. <laughs> Whoever end up, ends up being more right is going to join the Breakfast Club, Brenton. Oh, and by the way, we're going to get into title talk later on, buddy. So, yes. I'm giving this... Yes. I'm, I'm giving this... For that alone, that's going to contribute to the thumbs down. But boy, are my thumbs buried in the fucking dirt right now. All right. Okay, um, let's get into spoilers. Spoilers. We're going to spoil this movie. Yeah. Right now. The Breakfast Club spoilers. All right, so I'm going to say a criticism uh, about the goth character because that's probably my least favorite character in the film. I like <laughs> that she gets the moment at the end. Like, I do agree. But what I don't like is that, like, her beauty, let's say, or, like, her exterior is the reason why the jock character suddenly fucking falls head over heels. I mean, like, it makes <sighs> sense. It makes sense, but, like... And, like, for me, like... look, It just feels so unearned. Uh, like, I, I don't think it is earned, though. And I think that the idea is maybe that relationship going forward is, like, that, that, that day was kind of it. And the next day, he'll rock up to school, she'll rock up to school, and he'll be like, well, what you looking at, you goth? Yeah. And she'll be like, you know, and she'll be, like, all heartbroken, and then mm, that'll be that. That will be I feel that. like that, Yeah. I don't know. Um, I just, I didn't like her at all. I really hated her when she uses her bloody dandruff to, like, colour in the drawing. Oh, I don't um, like her. I don't like, again, there's some things with her they're that They're just are so gross. Like, like, people are so like, snotty and spitty back in the 80s. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, like, I just, the lunch scene with her is just so fucking, oh like, God. I don't know, what is it? It's like, it's like those, like, sherbet sticks on a, like, on a sandwich Yeah. with, what, what is it? That like, is like, the most feral meal I think I've ever seen in cinema. And it's like meant to be a joke, but like it wasn't funny. I enjoyed more the scene in Matilda where the fat kid eats cake more than seeing her eat that meal. <laughs> Cause I was like <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Yeah. I was like that shit is dis- like if the fat kid in Matilda, I'm sure is the name, I'm very sorry. But if he like if he got presented that thing that she made, the goth girl, I'm sure he would have immediately just like walked off stage going, nope <laughs> It would have been thrown in that principal's little cage. But oh I was just like I hated all of them. I, I hated that the boy got so many lines out of all of them, he, he got to talk the most. And I'm like, why? And who brings a knife to detention? Why does kids and teenagers in the 80s have knives on them? I'm like, well, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to prove? I mean, one, 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 this is America. And two... And, <laughs> wow, okay. And, 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 but it's, it's, it's true. Like, And two, like, he's obviously like from a really fucked up background with he some is. some abusive trauma yeah. in his home. Oh, life, wow. Who he? would have guessed? The bully got abused by his parents. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah but like, again, I think his performance is great and it, it makes it less... It needed way more nuance. It needed way more subtext. Do you know what I mean? But Every, this movie... Yeah. This, I, I, I agree. This movie isn't nuanced, but I don't think it needs to be. These are teenagers. They're not... No, they like, are nuanced. But, like, I don't know. They go from, like, enemies to, like, suddenly revealing their deepest, like, shit. Like, within the span of, like, half an hour. I didn't buy that. Oh, I was come just like, on. Come on. Like, really, you're telling me at school that you wouldn't be at some party or some fucking thing and you'd immediately, like, be going, <laughs> like, after half an hour, you'd be going into a deep and meaningful with some person than your oh, grade that, like, you met, like... Yeah, but not... Yeah, okay, like at a party, thing. yes. And also when I wanted to be friends with them. Not in a school detention. Okay, if I was locked in a school detention <laughs> with five other kids that I, like, I'd seen around school and I'm like, I'm not interested in you. I think you're bad but- people. I wouldn't, like, half an hour later, like, like just start going, oh, yeah, this is, like, all okay. what's going on with me, you okay. know? Even after you wouldn't have a group therapy session, even after everyone had smoked weed and then like done like some crazy fucking okay. aerobic dancing together, okay. like in, okay. in the because, library. <laughs> okay, okay. Now there's a lot to talk about there. First, let's talk about that weed scene. They are th- okay. All right. <laughs> yes, there's. I have so many ways. There's so many things I need to say about this weed scene. Okay, first, they're fucking idiots. I can't believe <laughs> that they smoked weed in the school library. Like one, it would have because they crawled through the vents at one point. That shit would have the whole school would have smelled like weed, for starters. Yep. So like, the teacher yep. would have smelt the marijuana that they had in the school. Two, this teacher would have smelt the marijuana, like, even before they started smoking it, just from that. Like, number three, like, he, they, like, when they were high later on, the teacher should have smelt it on them. So there's no way that they got 
thought away was smoking weed. I mean, how incompetent is this teacher? Can we talk about that as well? Like oh, we the will. whole scene where he where he falls through the roof and then the teacher oh walks in he's and like, is like, what? Well, like ruckus. <laughs> and then they have he's like under the desk making noise and then he's like trying to get up the girl's skirt and then oh my they're God. like all doing their coughing and the banging on the table or whatever. And he's just like, I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> I'm like, what? And then you and then he idiot. has the toilet paper gag of like that he's still got the toilet paper oh hanging out of his pants. Oh, teacher, oh you that idiot. teacher sucks. You fucking idiot. I was so uncomfortable when his head went up that dress as well. I'm like, this is just gross. This is, this is the, I don't know if there was, were there women involved in the making of this film? This feels like such like a guy's perspective on like, like of, of what the, you know, the teenage boy would have been like. These girls just, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's my biggest complaint of the film. Like, it's just so misogynistic. Like the girls don't have any agency in this. Like, and like they like, and the whole time, like they're, like they're trying to, but then they eventually just latch onto some guy and they try and get together in the end. Like, I don't know, but like, but but back to that marijuana because I do want to make this point. I don't know if you've ever been around someone that smoked marijuana, Brenton, but I don't know what those kids smoked because it ain't weed. Because like those kids should not be acting what they well, are I, when they're on weed. Well, it's it's quite funny. Like when the their responses to the to the drugs, like is just like it's so not. Again, like I don't know because I've never in my life I've never I've never smoked weed or you know. But but I'm telling you right now, I. From what I understand, no one comes out of a room smoking a joint and then does like six cartwheels. In a yeah, row. that's impossible. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing? And I'm like, and like, there's no way. Like, everyone in that set would have been bloody having a bong in their back pocket. So there's no way they didn't know that this is not what marijuana did. Like, it was the eighties, and so it. I when, when, when they when they start smoking, they start having like the weird conversations. I'm like, okay, I kind of buy this, but when they start fucking cartwheeling, I'm like, no, nah, this is you, you just threw all sense of verisimilitude out of the door buddy i just did not buy that for two seconds like oh i was i was angry about that i like that you mentioned the teacher before because he's so fucking stupid like the fact when the door closes and he doesn't like why doesn't he just sit in the room with them like he's like he's not doing anything in his office he's just reading a book why does he have to read a book in a separate room it makes no sense i I mean like why would i I mean, like to me, like he—he's just the type of guy that just would never want to um to to interact with with students, and like it's pretty clear that he just like hates children, and he should just not be a teacher. You know what I mean? Like oh. it's like so it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it's just he's like my biggest like he's like the worst character in this film. Oh, for why sure. does he like? Why does he tell the kids that he's earning thirty one k? Like he brags about the <laughs> like I was just, he's just yeah I, I, I laughed I, no, I laughed I the hardest not, in that scene because I'm like you. Fucking idiot! You're bragging about earning 31k. Not that 31k wasn't like you know something to be proud of in the 80s. No. But I'm like, why are you telling this random child your salary? That's like the golden rule of being a teacher. You don't tell the children your salary. No, like, well, oh. like I just, I, yeah, I don't get it. I, I don't get I it. I was at just, all. I was just flabbergasted when he did that. Like, yeah, I was like, you know what? I did like the scene where they're all running around the school, like trying to um, avoid being caught by him, because it felt so much like a scene out of Scooby Doo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even the way it's shot, like, yeah, it's so Scooby Doo, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was, God, I did yeah. like that. I did like that. Yeah, but then like shit like that is immediately ruined by like a scene where like the kid screams and like the fucking glass breaks. You know what I mean? I'm like. What's going on? Did you like um the the nerdy kid in it? Um, you know what? I loved it when he kept count of the detentions. Dude, uh, that, yeah, that, it's that great. was it's that great. was a great yeah. moment. I really yeah. loved him for that. I didn't like his monologue at the end. I'm like, oh, I don't care. I'm like, I oh, just. Oh. He's got a gun in his locker. He's gonna shoot himself. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. I'm like, excuse me. Like, I was like. Dude, of like my favorite, like one of my favorite scenes in it though is when they have that discussion about, and he uh, he brings it up and he asks the thing. He's like, "What's happening tomorrow? Like, are we all going to be friends?" Like, he's like kind of yeah. a naive guy, and he because he just like he he wants so bad to like you know have this. Mm have this connection with these people and like that that girl's just like no like i'm being honest like no and it's like <laughs> just like and it, no. <laughs> but she doesn't say it like like uh she says it like she's obviously emotional about that and she hates that like I, it's like she oh, yeah. hates us she hates herself so much that she can't like you know that she can't actually stand up for what she wants and then again the bully comes in with that you're such a bitch it's like, <laughs> you know, I do love the insults in this film like yeah but that's such a dog move that they do to him at the end remember when like so like the, the film's all finished and they're all about to finish detention and then like the popular chick just turns to him and she's like so do you want to write the essay like what a dog move like they've all suddenly become best friends and she just like makes him write the whole fucking thing and he calls her out on it he's like I don't what no we can all write this and she's like 
nah, you can write this. <laughs> I'm like, wow, what a bitch. I'm like, what a shit move. I, I really like that girl's character, though. Like, again, Mike, out of the five of them, I think the goth is the weakest in the okay, sense Okay, but with that popular that, girl, where the fuck did she learn that lipstick trick? I'm like, this okay, is... Okay, yeah, let's talk yeah. about... Like, that, 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 that lipstick trick... It doesn't exist. One and yeah, two. It's you. like it's physically because it's physically impossible. To do. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> ah, do you reckon this is like some weird like mutant school? Like, <laughs> what situation are you ever going to be in where you need to apply lipstick from your breast area? <laughs> like, like I just, yeah. I just don't. Who's gonna, yeah, if you're at a party, okay. Imagine you're 15, Brenton. You are at our first party. We're gonna like we might drink this night. This might be our first night getting drunk. Imagine like you just start talking to some girl. She just like whips out her tits and starts putting her lipstick on like that. Like you'd feel a little bit uncomfortable, wouldn't you? I'd well, I don't know. If, I'd be very. I'd be perplexed. Is the word I'd use? <laughs> <laughs> you'd scratch your head. You like put in a pipe and you'd be like, oh, do go on. How did one learn that? Like, but, 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 but why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just like, I just didn't give it. Because like, cause the last half half an hour of the film, it really tries to be good. I feel like John Hughes, like he woke up and he's like, oh wait, shit, I probably should have these kids actually have some like third dimension to oh, their characters. Come on, and come so, on, Nathan. And I could, see the, I could see the film trying. I could see it trying. But what I hated most about it, Brenton, with these monologues, is where the arsehole, arsehole the bully, he completely changed character. Like... I, uh, he went from like complete dickhead to like all oh, kind and caring like oh what's your problem guy in like one scene yeah I mean like I'd argue he kind of always is that character and like the the other is like his exterior of like trying to like suppress like any any you know feeling um, I'm trying to remember what the trigger is um, for that like what's because he, it, cause I think it's probably of, the weird dance that they do. I reckon that's the bloody trigger. I think, but also like I think there's something like with the that the, he covers for them, like he he sacrifices himself for them, and then they sacrifice themselves for him for, mm. to a certain extent. By they both cover for each other, and so there is a respect, sacrifice. I think, in this that. is not fucking Lord of the Rings where they lay down swords. Sacrifice. No, 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 no. This movie isn't Lord of the Rings. Like no, yes. put that on the like, poster. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, Nathan. I'm sorry. I'm Nathan, so bitter Nathan. this episode. You're so bitter. Like, just, just, like, I just, I really think this is a great movie, and it's such a shame that. Okay. Um, Another thing on my bitterness. I thought the scene where the goth chick suddenly has this amazing, beautiful reveal. Hermione did it so much better. No, she did not. Okay. No way. <laughs> You're putting no the foot down. No way. I Goblet of Fire. We're talking about the film, right? We're talking about Emma Watson's. Yeah, bloody Emma Watson entrance. like being revealed. She's no. in the new dress. No, She's like- no, 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 no. That is one of the worst. Goblet of Fire is one of the worst reveals or makeovers ever because Emma Watson is this gorgeous like little. I know um, it's completely unearned. Girl, the goblet, yeah. and so like it's not unearned. She doesn't like. There's no significant real change mm. to to the way she looks or anything, and. Like it's just so unearned that moment. But here's the weird thing about it, because like the because because the message of this film with Breakfast Club is saying to the people, okay, love who you are, accept who you are, all that kind of stuff. You know, accept the faults and all that kind of stuff. Be better, all that kind of shit. So then, but then it completely throws out that lesson when the goth chick changes to impress the guy. You know what I mean? Oh no, no, I mean no, 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 to impress the girl because the girls, the popular girls, like, oh, I can make you look beautiful, and the other goth girls, like, oh yeah, for sure. It's like she shouldn't have to do that. You know. No, I agree. I agree. That's my least favorite. Like, let's call it an arc, if yeah. we can really call it that. Like in the in, yeah. in the film, I disagree with that family. But I will say, like at the same moment, it at least they they try to a certain extent to make it like to retain her character afterwards. That she's still a bit, you know, like it's not like oh now I'm a bloody princess or something. Oh like she still like rips his like patch off his jacket and is like yeah I'm gonna fucking take this home now oh and he's God. like oh. Alrighty. Did you not, did you, not, <laughs> did you not find that sexual chemistry force at the end? A little. Like, bleh. Like, come on. They all did. I thought they were all going to be friends. I thought it would have been better if they were all friends. Why did they have to get to with each other? I, I, I don't think there should have been two different couples. Maybe there could have no. been, like, flirtations and, and whatnot. But, you know, at least one of them. For me, like, it, which couple would you have rather got together at the end? Who would I prefer? Probably, I don't know, none of them. I did Maybe, like... I feel like the jock and the popular girl were obvious, and I feel like they did have a past together, but, like, I don't know. Like, I honestly don't think any of them needed to be couples. I wasn't shipping any of them during the film. You know what I mean? You know, maybe... Like, I really don't know. I not, None of them, truly. None of them I wanted. <laughs> so you would have rather them all just be friends. Like, and I, I, I don't think that's a bad outcome either. I think that's quite, hmm. you know... Yeah, I think uh, yeah, that's that's that would be a good outcome. Like, I mean, like, I do like that there's sexual tensions there. Um, I mean, I, I'm just trying to decide because I kind of like, 
Well, I don't like how it is in the film that the jock and the crazy chick get together. Um, yeah, I hate, like, and I hate, I hate as well that I have to refer to the goth character as like the crazy chick because she's just so like the for instance in that lunch scene, it's just so far out of like any sense of normalcy. No, no, no. she there's some batshit crazy. Shit. Also, she rocks up to the detention because she had nothing better to do. It's like, come on, it's like yeah, it, yeah. I mean, like that's a good line. Like that is a good line of. I like, do, I did and, like that line, but I was still like, oh come on, it's like you're better than this. <laughs> or maybe she's not. <laughs> maybe, maybe. You're like, yeah. And then you're like, oh, maybe she's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, last thing from me. Did the letter at the end, you know how they're reading out the letter and there's like a montage of them all leaving the school. Did that remind you so much of Dark Knight Rises? Of the let, like, oh. Um, you know when they're reading out the letter and they're like, you know, and they're like, and it's like, this is what being a teenager means. And then like, and they're like leaving the school. I was just like waiting for like the bloody hand zimmer just to kick in. And then just like, <laughs> and then they rock up to the car and it's like, oh, you should really go by your middle name, Robin. And he's like, what? <laughs> I, I have, I have something to say about that last scene when they're heading out to the cars, actually, that like makes me laugh every time I've seen that scene, of the mm. two times I've seen it. And that is that like, so they're all like really making out with each other. Like they're having like these yeah, huge embraces. Yeah, they're going for it. And they're like, they're, they're in there. It's like, it's full on. It's, it's rough. It's raw. It's everything's happening. And then, and then the parents are just like sitting in the car, just like, like just watching it. Like they're right there. <laughs> they're just, they're just, they're just sitting there, just like minding it's their own business. And like, so, and the kids it's are like, so funny. Like it's, it's so it's weird. Hilarious. I was laughing like, so much. I'm like, I would be so awkward if I was a parent. And then, so. and then, and then they just get in the car and just drive off casually. Like, yeah, like they, they don't like, even have yeah. a conversation with their parents as they get in the car. They just sit down. There's silence, and then the car just like storms off. I'm like. Oh, this is such a weird film. Fuck, this is weird. Oh. I don't no. know. Yeah, like, again, like, I really enjoy this film, and I think, like, the characters are... I think the characters, for the most part, are strong, and I like their interactions, and I and I like where the story goes. I like its kind of exploration and some of the conversations that they have. But I can still recognise that some of this shit's, like, melodramatic, cheesy as fuck, and um, a bit nonsensical at points as well. I will I will obviously admit that. But overall, like man, I still think it's a movie worth watching. And I think it's a great movie for a Thursday night. I learned down with nothing tonight. from this film. There's nothing I could have seen in this film that other films didn't teach me better. Spider Man Homecoming is a way better teenage film. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, if you want an eighties film about being a teenager, that's perfect for it. Like Richie Rich is a great film about, you know, young kids. Like teenagers, is 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 Richie? Does Richie Rich still hold up? That's a question I, I have to ask. That's a, that's a question I need to ask too. And I think there's only one yeah. podcast that can tell us that answer. Mm, mm. Mm. It's not us. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. Um, no. So I, we we should touch Richie Rich at some point. I'm trying to think of like th- of this genre. I'm trying to think of like better films. Homecoming is the one that jumps to mind, but that's again very recent. Like when I was a teenager, I'm trying to think of the things I watched. I think television does a better job. At this, honestly, I feel like, I feel like, um, Stranger Things is better at this, or like, um, even the X Men to an extent. I thought did a great job at it. Uh, which X Men though? Like the newer X Men, or because I no, like the two thousands X Men. Even though they were all also, even though those actors were also in their thirties pretending to be teenagers, I don't know I feel like they did it better. I don't know. Maybe maybe there is no film that exists, Brenton. Maybe just teenagehood is just uncaptured. Mm, look, I I I think this is I think this is good. I think this is I think this captures kind of what what it's setting out to achieve. Right. Um, and I think it's worth a watch, man. I think we'll have yeah. to agree to disagree. Yeah, exactly. Like, sure. Like, I respect your opinion, and I think it's great that we're having this disagreement for the for the benefit of the show. Um, I really, I'm so interested to know what our audience think thinks. So, I know like yeah. we usually give this spill at the end of the app, but like, come on, you got to tweet at us now, comment on oh, that YouTube. Please let Just us know. Let us know if there. Like, are, yeah, if there are, I'm happy to be swayed. If someone makes a really, really not that Brendan hasn't made good points, but if someone makes a really like bullet in the what's that thing, the smoking gun. If someone has that, let me know. I want to know what brings this film around for you. Like, and not just the nostalgia. Don't just say, oh, I love this when I was the 80s because I was a teenager I'm like no today what makes it I will so say good? I will say maybe for me that like there is moments in this that I really relate to some of the characters in here, in here and they there's some great lines in this movie that I'm like wow that's a that's a great line and I can like um, I can relate that to moments in my adolescence or growing up or even now um but so maybe it's a personal thing for yeah, me but I, objectively I, I can look at this and still go yeah there's there's issues with it but overall 
I'm, I think I still think it's worth a watch. Brenton is just Brenton just sees himself in the scene where they're all dancing. He just sees his own dance moves. So I understand that. But you know. <laughs> Nathan, I just have a question though. What is that question? How did how did they make this making movies Breakfast Club? Yeah, did they fry the eggs? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how did they make this? Okay, I've got a, I've got my own bloody smoking gun to say how they made this movie about why I think it's shit. John Hughes, director and writer John Hughes, wrote this script in two days. I didn't know that. I there didn't you go. Know that. So if you need any stronger evidence about how shit this film shit. is, it was written in forty eight fucking hours. Shit. <laughs> okay, look, but sometimes genius just you you just genius just inspires you and you just you just you just go at it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure, mate. No. No. No, 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 no. I'm not no. Nah. <laughs> I just say no. I say fight up no. They should have had a writers room. They should have had a bloody committee. They should have like I don't know blockbusted this thing like ugh. Parmesan cheese was used for Allison's dandruff. <laughs> like doesn't oh, make it any easier to watch, Brent. Does, doesn't that make makes it, it any worse. easier. It makes it so oh, wo- much I can't worse, eat cheese yeah. now, Brent. Fuck it. Parmesan cheese is off the menu now. I'm just going to look at that thing and think, "Oh, there's the goth's hair." Imagine the smell. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> oh god, that's so rank. Could you imagine? She probably just like grates cheese into her hair at night. God. Like, it's actual parmesan cheese. Like, <laughs> oh, okay, I would 100% forgive that if she said later on in the movie there was a line saying, oh, no, I just grate cheese into my hair. This is actual cheese. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'd be back oh. on board if she said that. Would that make it better, though? Uh, anyway. It'd make it funnier. Okay. Uh, Main North High School in... Uh, in, Illinois, in Illinois was used during the filming of The Breakfast Club. The library scenes were actually filmed in the gymnasium on a constructed set. The school was also used for interior filming on Ferris Bueller's Day Off, though nearby Glenbrook North High School doubled as the exterior of the school Ferris ditched. In fact, some posters on the main hi- main North High walls can be seen in both Ferris and The Breakfast Club. So like, so, so John Hughes, I, I was reading an interview with him because you know, I do my research so thoroughly, and he was saying that like um, he actually decided to film these films back to back at the same school to save um, budget costs and that kind of stuff mm. so like but it but it's so weird for me because i think ferris bueller is such a strong have you seen it yeah of course I've yeah seen ferris so Bueller's it's Bale. such a strong film and it makes me feel so weird the creative i feel like this was an afterthought like he wrote the ferris film and then he like said oh maybe i'll do a detention film as well and he wrote this in like two extra days you know like he had like like 60 days to write the script and he finished it in like 58 so he's like fuck it let's just make a detention movie at the same time so knowing that, that makes me feel like, oh, how much I would have loved to have um, Ferris Bueller rock up in detention. Oh, it would have been so much better. Actually, this could have even worked as a sequel. Could you imagine, like, at the end, spoilers for Ferris Bueller, but, like, imagine if instead he did get detention, and then, like, the sequel to that was him sitting in detention and a segues into Breakfast Club. This movie would have been so much better for it. Look. No, I don't need a sequel to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Like, I understand where you're coming from, and, like, that's mm. an exciting thought, but just just leave it alone. The po- so the poster, we'll talk about it in a second, but this poster is a very famous poster, because it yes. actually, because of what the, we'll talk about in a sec. Actually, no, fuck it, let's just do it in the big one. Let's say, hey, let's look at this film's poster. Hey, let's look at this film's poster. All right. So, because this makes sense once you actually know what the poster is. So what it is, is that it's, like, the five main characters all looking directly into the camera lens, and they're all pulling, like, like cool poses, they're all leaning like they're doing something like a Vogue magazine cover shoot. And it says in simple red font, The Breakfast Club, and it says, five strangers with nothing in common except each other. Which is the worst, that's the worst tagline for a movie. Oh, like, it's so bad. So like, shit. So bad. So shit. This actually isn't the theatrical poster. I digged on the internet, Brenton, and I, I, like, I found the theatrical poster, but there's no high resolution version of it, so I'm like, are you, and it has this long like poem on it, and I, I couldn't be fucked finding it, so I'm like, fuck it, we'll talk about the DVD. But it's the same pose, is the main thing. So anyway, these characters are like, all sitting around, all looking at the camera, being bad asses and that kind of stuff like they're on a taylor swift album or something like that and then um the way this has been shot is like the biggest influence on these kind of films because um this is the first one to really do that with the characters all huddled together looking at the camera so like all the other rom-coms all the other youth-based films tv all that kind of stuff they've copied off this so wow. yeah like yeah. i mean you can see it like yeah yeah and you know what this poster is iconic actually i i don't think i have a problem with it except the tagline no, no, the tagline's terrible. I think it's quite a good poster apart from that tagline. Mm. I think it's uh, it's great. Except the goth chick doesn't look like the goth chick in the movie. Like, that's the only no. thing. She's probably well. a weird facial expression as well. She looks like she's confused to be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, let's get into title talk. Oh, because, right, yeah. yes. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here's was my... There, fa- was there breakfast at the breakfast club? No! No, there bloody wasn't. And I was so... 
disappointed. I was so heartbroken, and I was like, for years, I've been hearing about the breakfast. Okay, I'm going to rename this segment, actually, for this week. Instead of title talk, I'm going to call this, for our breakfast double bill, which had the better breakfast? Because, Brent, frankly, both films fail at this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like. Yes. Like, also, the Breakfast Club doesn't even take place at breakfast. No, they like, it rock doesn't. up at the school at like nine o'clock or whatever. Look, if we're saying which film has the better breakfast, like, look, I don't even know if that warrants a section because clearly Breakfast at Tiffany's has hands down the better breakfast because there's actually a breakfast feature she in act- the film. But, but her breakfast is like just a bloody scone that she has two bites of. True, true. But at least it's a breakfast as opposed to the Breakfast Club, which I'm still baffled as to why it's called the Breakfast why Club. Why is it called the I Breakfast don't know. Club? I don't know. I don't, they please, don't call it the Breakfast someone, Club? If someone has the answer, can you please let us know? Because I feel like I'm a crazy person. I, I know. feel like I'm Morgadu taking crazy pills. <laughs> like, I was thinking Morgadu too. I know, I know at one point John Hughes was going to name it the Lunch Brunch. He was thinking no, of that that's as the title. Terrible. That's even worse. That's, terrible. that's even way worse. But that was genuinely the working title. Oh, and so no. and so he's like, oh wait, no, Breakfast Club sounds more trendy. But like I just because also we don't know if they ever did do detention again. We no. know the bully did because he had like twelve detentions, but like uh, we don't know. So they might not have even been a club. I was just oh, what would you have called this film instead? Because I would have called it Angsty Teens the Movie. No, I was gonna call it Adolescence. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so much better. Fuck yes. Okay, done. That's that's what this is called for. Oh. Actually, no. Okay. You know what I said? Is there a film called A Dog's Breakfast? This is what this film should be called. A Dog's Breakfast. Because <laughs> that's exactly too, what it no, is. Too brutal. Too brutal. Settle right. down there, Nathan. Put that microphone back down. Okay. Think, speaking of not that brutal, should we talk about... Should we pass it to the people? Power. Power to the people. Let's pass it to the people. The power. And some fried eggs right. to make a breakfast club. Yeah. The Breakfast Club has... On Rotten Tomatoes, it is fresh with an 88% rating. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty pretty on point, I'd say. Uh, with an audience score of 92%. 556,000 people took the time to go to the Rotten Tomatoes site and 92% of them gave it a fucking thumbs up. Hmm. I hmm. Funny that, isn't it? I'm, I'm obviously in the minority here. I'm yeah. obviously in the minority, but I just... Oh, I just... I've said what I need to say. I'm, let's just... Okay, let's see how these fuckers defend this movie, all right? So, Austin Trunnick from Under the Radar, he liked it. And he said, An absolutely outstanding movie. Not only one of the best ever made about high school-age kids, but one of the pinnacle film of the 80s. Mm. I will give it that there probably is no 80s film more than 80s than this. You know what I mean? That's kind of true, yeah. It is very 80s. Hey, one of... What, what what a be- one of the best films ever about high school-age kids? Um... No, no. I would still say Homecoming does it better for th- for today's context. I would say Homecoming does it better. Hmm. What's your Spider Man film? <laughs> Paul Atanasio from the Washington Post gave it a rotten review and says, taking place almost entirely in one room, The Breakfast Club is the kind of movie and the kind of play that's hardly seen anymore. And good riddance. <laughs> it's true. Uh, brutal. Brutal. Very, very brutal. I will brutal. say, like, you you don't see movies like this these days. No, you don't. Probably because The Breakfast Club has already done it. I don't know what they'd do to make it any more fresh. Like, if they, made, if they said, okay, we're going to reboot Breakfast Club today, and we're going to do the exact same premise, I don't know if I would watch it. I don't think it'd be that interesting, truly. Joseph Gilmus from Newsday <laughs> also gave it a rotten reviews and said, nothing really changes. You hear nothing you haven't heard before, but you know that for them it is happening for the first time and they deserve compassion. I'm not sure that's a good enough reason to see The Breakfast Club. That's an interesting good point. review. That's a great. That's an interesting review. Yeah. Mm. I think. Th- I think that definitely. I think it's a good excuse for the film that these kids are going through all these things the first time, and maybe because we're worn old souls, Brenton. We've seen this all before, so maybe this doesn't feel as novel. But you know what I mean. Mm. Mm. Um. Paul D. He gave it three stars, and he gave this movie. He liked it. He said a sweet but realistic look at the lives of te- of five teenagers, obviously representing all teenagers through a plot device that could lend itself perfectly to a stage play, and allows for an almost total focus on dialogue and close ups. Certainly a bit hokey at times, particularly the treatment of the teacher and the parents, but still a very good film. Paul D. That's a great review. Yeah, mm. well done, mate. I, that's I a, do like that. Yeah, that's again, I, w- I, w- I would see this as a play. I think it would work better as a play. I'd love to see it as a play. I was going to say, like, this should this should be made a play. Like, it'd it'd be really interesting to see how it would uh, transfer onto the stage. Mm. I think it'd be obviously. I think it'd do it quite easily. Yeah, hundred percent. Heather R. gave it two stars and said, "Heard of this movie before, but I only just caught it on TV. Boring. 
Why is this considered a classic? So freaking dull. So freaking dull indeed. I just don't. I just don't think it's dull. Like I, I really don't. I don't know. You should have seen me. I was looking around the room like nothing else. Watching this, Brenton. I was like, I was like, I was looking at the window, hoping grass would grow quicker. I'm like, come on. <laughs> uh, Lisa, Lisa S. S. I'm saying this one four stars. God, I wish detention had been like this. Lol. <laughs> Oh, this I wish- is not like any detention I've ever no. ever experienced. Did you, did you ever get detention in school, Brenton? I'm trying to. Make I, got, I got. I got. Okay. I got. I got one. One bad one in year nine. Really? Um, when I didn't. Yeah, I didn't hand an assignment. I handed it in like a month late. I'm not even kidding. Wow. I handed it in like a month late, and wow. so I I had to go to the head of the of the. Did you give any excuse? No. <laughs> 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 That's even better. Oh. Um, well, I wasn't oh. gonna lie. I just was like, yeah, no. And so That's I so rocked funny. up. To, I, so I rocked up for this detention. Mm. Funny story. I I was punished in another way apart from this detention as well. Ooh. Um, that I was because you know there was ha- house captaincies in year nine. Oh yeah. I had my it, mine was stripped. Um, with that. Really? Yeah, I went to Mr. Uh, I won't say his name. I um, I went to the head of Year Nine. You had it revoked. Yeah, no. He said, "Is you so see your your? We see your names like on the house listing, and the voting's just happened. But um, I'm taking your, and you know, you've you've really? got this, and like you've got one of the positions, and uh, I'm taking you out. And I said, "Oh, okay. Like you know, wow. And I was like, "All right, for this assignment." And then so he said, "So please meet me here this time next week, like after school, and we'll do your detention." I rocked up, waited there half an hour, and he didn't show, so I went home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that's amazing. I, yeah, I called that's my mum. I was like, "Mum, come pick me up." And she's like, "What? Why?" And she, I was like, "Well, no one's here." Actually, no. That's I didn't wait half an hour. I probably waited ten to fifteen minutes, and I was, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, look, no, nah, not doing it." So, and no one, no one, no one ever chased me up about it. That's amazing. And That's like to be so fair, funny. I think I, I think I got the punishment. Like to be honest with that, yeah. He, he literally, this guy literally took my like my slip and ripped it in front of me for the house captaincy. Really? Like, it, was, it was fucking... Oh, my God. It was brutal, dude. It That's was so um, funny. Do you reckon that when you got school captain, he was just sitting in the audience, like, really bitter about it? <laughs> he was just shaking his no head. Doubt. Like, no doubt. Like, oh, no doubt. Oh, that's so funny. Like, as soon as you walk past getting your badge at the school or somebody, you just give them the finger? <laughs> yeah, true true captain-like status there. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, Fuck, that's uh, let's, great. Let's, let's get back to The Bob 1901. Yeah. This movie couldn't be made today. That's because the kids would spend the whole time texting away with nary, with nary a verbal word. What? I don't know what that word is. Maybe without a verbal word spoken. Without a verbal word spoken. And who'd want to watch a movie when the kids were doing nothing but that? That's the Bob, that's true. an interesting perspective. I'm sure they take them fo- their phones off them for detention. But like, if they did have their phones on them, like, yeah, their snap story would be lit. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha uh, Delta X-Ray. They haven't done a reboot on this movie because they know that they can't. Some movies you just leave alone. This, Scarface, The Godfather, etc. Yeah, look, I just I'm so for just like not rebooting shit and like just doing your own yeah. thing. So Don't like, touch it. Yeah, just leave it alone. Jamie Bantam said the parents must have thought an orgy took place when they all came out kissing each other. Exactly. Like it's so <laughs> weird. It's, like, and so it's so bizarre. But it's so it's even stranger that the parents just accept it. And it's so weird. I don't know why it happens. Like, f- could you imagine? Like, we're at school and like we've just done like we've gone into Saturday because we had to do the musical or something like that. Or we all kind of get picked up and then we just see like the detention kids rock up at the same time and they're all like hooking up. We're like, what? <laughs> that could be so weird. Mia says, wish we knew what happened on Monday. And I was thinking this, I was thinking if there was a sequel to this movie, it wouldn't even be like on the Monday or like the week after at the next detention. What would be funny if it like if the sequel took place at the high school reunion? Like the ten year reunion. Oh that would be good. That would yeah. be really good. How, I would love that. How crazy would that be? It'd be so much fun. Like oh. Oh. have you seen um American Reunion, the American Pie Reunion? No, no. Oh, it's horseshit. But I feel like they could do a much, <laughs> they could do a much, much better. I've seen every American Pie movie, which we will have to do at some point. We will have like, to do because I haven't seen none of them. Really? No, I've seen oh. none of those films. Yeah. Maybe, maybe when we inevitably finish Rocky, maybe we should save Pie for that or something like that. I feel like sure, <laughs> like I'll get you progressively know. stupider. But um, <laughs> but yeah, but like no, it, I think that would work extremely well. I actually had another thought then. If you want to see a good film about being about being a teenager, I think weirdly. The Jumanji sequel 
is a great movie about teenagers. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty good. You should really watch it because it's fantastic, weirdly, for a Jumanji sequel. But before they go into the video game, spoiler alert, like you, there's a good sequence where you just see them be teenagers and it is so accurate. Oh, actually, no, I lie. Another film came to my head. Eighth Grade. Eighth Grade is perfect for this. I haven't seen it, so I can't... Oh. I can't Bo Burnham, but, who made the film, it's fantastic. 100% watch it. It's a great... But that's more like preteen. That's more like year eight. Sure. So, but that's a better film as well. Well, in the meantime, I mean, like, that's Breakfast Club. That's our episode, which... We're done, dude. We've finished yeah. our breakfast double bill. Thank and, goodness. And, and at the end of it, they both had shitty breakfasts. We're, like, we're oh. moving on to lunch. Hey, I had a good I had a good second... I had a good brunch. I enjoyed the Breakfast Club, so... Well, thank God we had Tiffany's, I guess. Oh, I, I guess... Na- Na- Nathan! Nathan! Uh, mm. What 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 the hell what the what the hell is that in the roof? <laughs> Susan from the SWAT team, why were you in the roof? I just wanted to have breakfast. Yeah, we haven't been fed in months. Get back to the band aid pile, Susan. Okay. <laughs>